What is going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video and today got a very interesting idea for you guys as we're doing a Moneyball rebuild. Now, what Moneyball is, if you guys are not familiar with the concept, it was kind of brought together by the Oakland Athletics of the early 2000s based around like finding players with a higher on base percentage which was an undervalued stat in baseball at the time and really just not paying players a ton of money. And that's not to say that they didn't have some players that were highly paid. Miguel Tejada was an MVP uh, around that time with the team, and he had a pretty decent contract on him. But for the sake of this video, we're going to try and keep the contracts down. I need to create some type of construct to have like a rule set for this. So I think what I'm going to do is no players with contracts above $5 million per year. If you want to see an actual Raiders rebuild, I did a 20-year rebuild on the channel. Check it out. It's in the rebuilding playlist that this video is in as well. So you can go see that. Every team is in there so far. And if I did a realistic rebuild the first time, I'm going to do an unrealistic rebuild the second time and vice versa. You get it. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. It's completely free. Helps me out a lot. And I'm so close to 250,000 you guys. So that's so awesome. I'm glad I'm entertaining a lot of you guys. It's incredible to me. I appreciate the support. And yeah, I think we're going to do under 5 mil per year. But also, it might just be better to have a baseline for for overall salaries that we can't go over. Like, we have to stay 20 mil under the cap or something like that. We'll figure it out. We're hopping in. I chose the Raiders because uh, they're a team that hasn't really gotten a ton of funding. And that doesn't mean they haven't been able to sign, like, big free agents and whatnot. But Oakland Athletics in real life... Oakland Raiders, of course, then moved to Las Vegas. I could have just relocated a random team, but I feel like this is pretty on brand. Unfortunately, though, I will have to trade a lot of these players away because guys like Derek Carr, guys like Rodney Hudson, Trent Brown, they're going to be over that threshold. Or even if we decide to do an overall like team salary threshold, they're going to heavily contribute to that as well. The toughest part about this, in my opinion, is going to be finding a quarterback because we're either going to have to draft one and develop one within four or five years, but they're going to be expensive. QBs are so expensive. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Let's get into it, and we'll uh, we'll talk more about it in a second. So as we scroll through the salaries on here, there are some big ones. I didn't even know uh, LaMarcus Joyner was getting paid this much, and it's interesting with uh, the way some of these contracts are structured. It's going to be a lot more expensive next year for some of these guys, and then cheaper the next year and the year after that for some other guys. So I think the best, most efficient way to do this after evaluating uh, the overall salaries and based on where some of the league averages are, I think the best play is to set the baseline under $150 million for total salaries. As you can see at the top of your screen, 2020 cap is 210 mil. And salaries for most teams seems to be between 170 and 210 kind of be in the highest I, I think i chose the uh the most expensive team in the league somehow i mean the jaguars are under 130 jets under 140 so do i have to even set it lower Ooh, i don't know you know what let's let's do it let's get super crazy so here's what we're gonna do uh at any point the total salaries has to be below the cap and the cap i think actually does rise the way it does in real life in madden i could be mistaken about that and we'll, and we'll change it as we might need to but the 2020 cap is 210 mil and right now the lowest team in the league is the jaguars and they're at just under 130 which is what 80 mil off 82.9 mil in cap space so we're gonna say at any point we have to be over 75 mil in cap space so this is going to be extremely difficult <laughs> but uh i wouldn't have it any other way let's struggle let's go through this pain cap space has to be over 75 mil at every single moment and if it goes over we got to get rid of somebody ah yes interesting point we have 10 mil in cap space right now another thing we have to consider is this first year we're going to take a massive cap penalty just kind of cleaning some of these guys out so that will affect us, but salaries will be overall lower. So I guess cap space doesn't matter so much this first year because we're going to take a big penalty because we got to trade some of these guys away. But overall, salaries has to be below, what, 130 mil, basically? It's, it's around that. 
Need salaries to get to, I think it's 135 mil is the baseline I set. Let me just write that down so I don't remember, or don't forget, don't remember, yeah. Good call on that. So the big salaries to get rid of, Derek Carr, I mean, I almost want to call him David after I did my David Carr career resume. Number one overall pick in 2002, bust by the Texans. That video is up on the channel as well if you want to check out that. But I got to get rid of some of these huge contracts. Starting most notably with Derek Carr, Trent Brown, LaMarcus Joyner, Tyrell Williams, especially these guys that are signed in through 2022. Like, they got to go. After 2022, it's not too big of a deal. Like, we could probably continue to pay Darren Waller. But I'm not liking what I'm seeing in 2022. Massive contracts we have, including, we'll include Gabe Jackson, 9.6 million. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 at about 10 million to 20 million. Wild. Even look at Marcus Mariota's contract. Good lord. I, I said getting a QB is going to be the toughest thing by a mile. Okay, so this first trade, and this is the way we're going to have to set it up, I think. Because right now, based on the length that this rebuild's going to go, I can't just go out and trade for players with good contracts. For some of them, yeah. But for a lot of these guys, I just need picks. I need to navigate around the board to save money. And the number one overall pick, as is expected from the Jaguars in 2021 and 2022, as we have, that's going to be expensive in its own right. So we might have to trade down from those spots as well. But Derek Carr... Tyra Williams, Trent Brown, headed to Jacksonville for two first-round picks. Now, we just gave them an offense, so they might actually be fairly competitive. But Derek Carr, 20 mil. Trent Brown, add another 20 mil. Tyrell Williams, 10 mil onto that. 50 mil headed to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so I'm going to really just do an interesting trade here. I think Isaiah Simmons is going to be a really good player to have. He's listed at safety. We're probably going to end up playing him at linebacker, which means he's going to stay pretty cheap the entire time. Safeties just don't get paid very much. Inside linebackers don't get paid very much when you have to uh, do their contracts, for the most part. It's going to be Rodney Hudson, Jonathan Hankins, and a first-round pick. That's our first-round pick this year for Isaiah Simmons. Really, really good player uh, for the future. Now, hasn't looked amazing in real life. He struggled to find an exact role for the Cardinals. They've kind of kept him off the field. He's played better in recent weeks because he's actually gotten some more playing time. He's learning where to be uh, and how to play. Still going to struggle in uh, run fits and things like that because he is still developing that play strength due to the size of his frame, and he's not really a true linebacker. But I, I think we're going to play him at safety and then as a sub linebacker. Figure out what to do with Jonathan Abram. But... I want to get that first round pick back because I think we're going to be fairly bad. So I need to get this first rounder back from Arizona. It's going to involve probably Carl Nassib. It might involve uh, Corey Littleton or Nick Kwiatkowski. Where's Corey Littleton? He listed a right outside linebacker. But I think Kwiatkowski is probably going to be on the move. They don't want Carl Nassib? Now they don't want Kwiatkowski? What's going on? Carl Nassib and Tack McKinley actually get me the Cardinals first. And I'm not done. In order to, to work this thing out, I'm going to have to just be super savvy. And maybe that's going to mean abusing the system a little bit. Or a lot. I'm trying to keep Cleveland Furl, to be honest. But I I want my first round pick back. And LaMarcus Joyner probably has to go in order to make that happen. I don't feel like trading Darren Waller. I don't want to trade Josh Jacobs. What are the Cardinals even going to want? Okay, Richie Incognito, Gabe Jackson, Corey Littleton to the Cardinals for our first round pick back and a 2022 second rounder. So I know I'm completely blowing up this team, but it isn't about the Raiders. It's about the money ball concept. And we just kind of needed a clean slate to work with. And there's so much talent on this team for the future. Like Colton Miller, now that he's actually developing, he's going to be a really good player for us. Now he will get pretty expensive. So I'm trying to just batten down the hatches and prepare for that. Henry Ruggs should be a stud star receiver in the future he's playing on a first round contract he might end up getting expensive so i would say unfortunately don't get too attached to anybody because a lot of these guys are going to be gone it's just the nature of the beast so right now our salaries is at 112 so i know our cap space is only 51.7 mil we're experiencing quite a few penalties right now like a lot of them but salaries is way 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 down now, of course, we're trying to keep that under, what, 135? 
Yeah, 135. So we are like clear under that right now. But I don't think I'm done because guys like LaMarcus Joyner, who are 29 years old, only an 80 overall, they got to go. It is not worth paying him that. And we're paying him that for the next three years. Furl is fine. Kwiatkowski is probably going to go. Ruggs is fine. Uh, and I think the rest, pretty much fine. I'll probably wait on trading Kwiatkowski. And who was the other one I said? LaMarcus Joyner. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner actually has to go now, though, because of his age. He's going to regress. So I cannot wait until the offseason to trade him because regression will hit. He'll be down and overall. Can't happen. Is there anyone I need to trade because I only have one year remaining? Theo Riddick's on the Raiders? No way. Nicholas Morrow. He might have some value. Malik Collins on a one-year deal. Okay, so we got to trade him. Nelson Aguilar, LaMarcus Joyner headed to the Jets. Two positions they actually need a lot in real life. I think these players would really help them out. And we're getting a first round pick those guys had to go now i said i wanted to trade malik collins as well but i also want to trade nick kwiatkowski the reason i'm going to hold off on kwiatkowski for right now he's still under contract he's 27 so he might end up progressing a little bit more into the 80s might give him some more trade value also at that point i'll probably be able to buy a uh trade package to boost my value on some of these guys so uh, I need to add one more player. Nevin Lawson. Nevin Lawson. Make it happen. No, it's just barely not going to work. Okay, Malik Collins, Nicholas Morrow, and a fourth round pick. Get me a first from the Lions. So that's all I'm going to do for right now. The team is garbage. Well aware of this. Had to happen. This first year was just about creating as much cap space as possible. Our salaries is under 100 mil. <laughs> That's so crazy. So we are going to have all the money we want pretty much to sign anybody in free agency. But again, we do have to remain under that $135 million for total salaries. And that's in a relation with 210 for the salary cap. If the salary cap rises in Madden, I'm not sure it does. I can't remember. But if the salary cap rises, however much it rises by, total salaries will rise as well. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but just for example, if the salary cap is 210 million, as it is now, and we set the baseline for 135 mil, we have to be under that. The salary cap jumps up to 220, we would also get a $10 million window. 135 would jump up to 145. We're one in six at the mid-season mark, which I'm fine with. Don't really anticipate being good at all. Nevin Lawson, I could have tried to trade. Raekwon McMillan, I want him around. He's only 24 years old, but I'm also paying him here as an outside linebacker, which is not really what I want to do because he's going to be significantly cheaper, I think, if we pay him as a middle linebacker. Henry Ruggs, superstar dev. Excellent. I actually didn't know he had superstar. Is he in the slot? Let's put him in the slot. Let's boost him up. Maybe get superstar X-Factor or something like that. Uh, Furl has a rush D tackle. Fine. I needed to play Isaiah Simmons at sub linebacker. Like, that's fine that he's starting a strong safety. Also, superstar dev. But I'd rather have Jonathan Abram, I think, at strong safety and Simmons basically being a linebacker. Kwiatkowski, I'm going to move over to outside linebacker. He's under contract. His overall will jump up. Raekwon McMillan's going to play middle linebacker because when it comes time to re-sign him, which we're going to wait till the end of the season, I want to pay him like a middle linebacker, not like an outside backer. Kwiatkowski to an 80. Raekwon up the middle. And then my sub linebackers, probably not going to be Jonathan Abram. Probably going to be Isaiah Simmons. And probably going to be Raekwon McMillan. Do I really want to re-sign anybody in here? Raekwon McMillan eventually, yes. Daryl Worley. We're going to need to find value deals. Is he going to be one of them? He's going to have, what, four years to develop or thereabouts. Get him up maybe to an 80. Uh, probably not worth it. Daniel Carlson, I don't need to pay a kicker. Actually, he's super cheap. Uh, so I'm actually just going to give him this contract. I mean, that's that's under 7 mil a year. Or 7 mil for 7 years, under a mil a year. Easy. The rest, not too worried about at the moment. Just need Raekwon McMillan. I'm going to wait till the end of the season. And I'm going to wait on Coach XP probably as well. I don't even think we can afford anything. I think we're, what? Did I buy? Yeah, I bought increased player weekly goal XP at the start. Um, I think I'm probably 
going to do expert scouting because we need to take super big advantage of our draft picks. So the more we know about players, the better. So shout out CPU for scouting for me. We're going to simulate to the playoffs. I have a hunch we're not going to be a part of them. Just, just a thought. Did not make the playoffs. Didn't expect to. Uh, we went 5-11. and 11. Kind of just had to set the groundwork for this rebuild video. And that involved doing a lot of weird things. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. We had to do a lot of things to get rid of a lot of salary cap. We had to just do salary cap dumps. Titan Saints in the Super Bowl. Interesting matchup. As Raquan McMillan, I want to extend him. He's 25 years old. Didn't jump up in development trait. But as you can see, his cap hit is going to be uh, pretty easy to manage. He's only a 71 overall, though. Would jump up if I moved him to outside linebacker, which I might do after this. Had a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, but I think I'd be fine to sign him on a four-year deal. Not really paying him too much. He's not interested in signing. You're also a 72 overall. So I'm not losing out on a ton there. We're just going to build through the draft. Try and get really, really, really good contracts in free agency. That's the thing that happens quite a bit is some top players just don't get offers. So there's a really good chance we could get some great players for effectively nothing. Any dev trade increases? Foster Moreau has star. Didn't know that. He certainly is not going to play left guard. Hmm. No increases on offense. What is Marcus Mariota's contract? Please tell me that. How long is he going to be on this team? One year remaining. I'm not paying him 10 mil. Like, he's gone, clearly. Any increases on defense? Ooh, yes. Maurice Hurst. Mo Hurst gets superstar dev. That's excellent. And I turned off dev trait regression for this rebuild just to try that out. So he has superstar for the rest of the time here. Now, middle linebackers, not middle linebackers, D-tackles can get fairly expensive. He's on the last year of his deal. It's going to be pretty frustrating. Also, for Isaiah Simmons, I think I'm just going to go after this. Actually, I'm going to go run support right now. He's going to keep his scheme fit, but if I plan on moving him to middle linebacker at any point, I need him to be able to tackle. I need him to be able to shed blocks. So run stopper is what I'm doing there. And the CPU will just automatically upgrade zone while he's still at strong safety. So we'll see what's available in free agency. We have a ton of money. We just need to find the big deals. Like Earl Thomas wouldn't be the worst signing ever. That would be a decent pickup. He wants a lot of money, but also if we offer him like nothing, he, either he signs for super cheap or rejects us. I mean, it's, it's a win-win. We don't have anything to lose by offering that. Okay, so I do have negotiations going on with a lot of different free agents. I would say the one I'm most interested in is Chris Barnes. He's like an upgraded Raekwon McMillan. Younger, higher overall, and I think effectively cheaper. We're offering him essentially nothing. Just under 21 mil over five years. I mean, that's super affordable. Nothing contract for Puna Ford. Cam Robinson, same deal. I mean, these are really, really, really cheap deals. And if we get anybody to sign, we're gonna win. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be the free agency winners. Nobody as of yet. Hassan Reddick rejects. I mean, I knew we were gonna see a lot of rejections. Uh, we everyone rejected. I thought Chris Barnes was gonna accept. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't. That's fine. Colton Miller. I think it's gonna be more effective to not pick up his fifth year option and then extend him, because if we pick up his fifth year option and then give him. An extension he's gonna be higher overall after that next season so i'd rather just skip the whole fifth year option whatever extend him at his lowest overall give him the lowest amount of money as we prepare for the draft picking at number one overall also number four we're in a really good spot we, i can't take this pick i think everyone knows i can't take this pick we just can't afford it and every qb in here is pretty viciously bad and I would consider taking a QB who's an early second round guy. I really would. But the fact that these guys are supposed to go in the first round really just throws me off. And I don't want to take that. But Jonathan Delos and Brett Roper, maybe. Luckily, that's Roper and not a different letter in there after. Well, whatever. Um, don't really need running back too much. 
wide receiver could happen carlos landry early first rounder in the third round that's a second round pick for sure we are taking him and we don't have to pay him like a first rounder that's excellent that's a big thing for the draft is uh getting value picks down the board because those players are cheaper zion pound i bet he does man to man guy only a second round pick here we're just looking for value down the board another thing is as i'll probably look to take Jacques pearson if he's available looks like a really really good player it's not about getting the best players necessarily but the best players for my scheme we've had a lot of success with three four storm lately and that involves getting a bunch of speed rushers to play in your front seven so i'm down to just fit guys into my scheme get the best players for this team not the best players in general but i'm trading down this pick no brainer trading number one overall back to number three picking up number 35 and also a first rounder next year from philadelphia they jump washington football team division rival to get the number one overall pick and they use that to take a corner isaiah watkins football team at two they take the qb jonathan delos if he has a good development trait i don't think that's a terrible pick but i am a bit hesitant to say that he does now i think that jock pearson would be a good pick here joey gardner out of the u looks great as well baller skip the combine today roger goodell i'm not doing your damn combine merch is in the description if you want to skip the combine stuff i'd be happy with either of those players but is it a mistake to take both i don't know i mean the salary associated with those top picks is going to be pretty high i mean we do have the money for it very easily but it could limit us later that's the only thing i worry about so based around my new 3-4 defense that revolves around speed rushers we are set up pretty well for it cleveland furl speed rusher max crosby speed rusher maurice hurst very close to a speed rusher he's got finesse moves as his main trait uh, other than power moves right so he's a finesse rusher so i really just need two edge guys I think you see where this is going. Kwiatkowski can move inside. Isaiah Simmons can move to linebacker on the inside. We're kind of set at that point. We just need two edge guys. And where would I find them? At pick number three and four. I'm going to do it. Jacques Pearson, 21 years old out of Oregon. Finesse move, pass rusher, early first round guy. Not an amazing combine, but pretty good. And the skills are there. So we're taking him. Number two in the draft, 77 overall, star better development that's amazing really really needed a hit on this pick and we did it's that star better dev that i love 83 speed 83 finesse moves i mean he's just gonna stay at left outside linebacker not really a cover guy but a get after the quarterback guy and that's what we need that's what we got and now it's time for the baller said roger goodell up yours i'm not doing the combine skips it bigger boy 6'4", 258. He's also going to stay at his position at right outside linebacker and go from Miami to Las Vegas. He loves to be in a party city. Well, you got it. 75 overall. Unfortunately, only normal development. Ranked number eight in the class. Took him at number four. But he's got 85 speed. Decent blocks at 75 as well. Tackling could be a bit higher. Finesse moves almost in the 80s. Again, not a cover guy at all, but he's a pass rusher. That's what he's going to do. 90 acceleration really happy with that pick as well of course you'd love to see better than normal dev but i'm not really too upset about it here we are at number nine probably not going to take this pick don't need to look at pass rushers anymore unless they are like 6'5, 290 and they can play on the inside power rusher i'm kind of out on that first round pick in marcus mariota to the dolphins we're getting a first round pick from them next year and then mariota i don't want his contract he's gone very easy decision i'm not taking number 16 either it's going to be a first rounder from somebody next year probably the jets they're just going to be pretty bad it's just how that works we're just going to straight swap okay never mind it's going to be a first rounder a sixth rounder and a future sixth rounder for number 10 next year projected from the jets cap room swells to 120 mil we don't have a ton of players right now i would consider picking at 24 i'm going to see what the board looks like but i'll tell you right now as far as what's on my particular watch list for the draft board like do you see anyone really worth taking here not at number nine i have guys in the second round and beyond that i like so we'll uh, we'll move down there closer 
number 24 in the draft and consider drafting here i mean this qb is interesting i don't think i'm going to take him in the first round like at all i know he's not going to be a first round guy i'd consider it in the second i would but i like these two players a lot larry cobb out of clemson larry good top skills early first round guy and then nate billingsley he's gonna be back up d tackle speed rush type mid first round guy but fits the scheme really well only 21 years old we're getting just loading up on young talent and he would fit pretty damn well i don't want to risk larry cobb getting drafted though so i'm going to take him we need help on the o-line he will be that number eight in the class took him at 24 only normal development but looks really really good good strength run block pass block all good R pass block power great lead block impact blocking i mean just looks great overall his finesse could use some work but fits the scheme that's important and is also a very very solid player good fill-in as i think we'll go defensive tackle here provided our player is on the board and he is so nate billingsley should be a really good pick here welcome to las vegas 74 overall ranked number 19 took him at 35 he's not going to play right away but he does have 77 finesse moves 78 speed great strength pretty good tackling as well he might end up being a stud unfortunately only normal development and at this pick it would be between a quarterback and brett roper who would be decent value for this spot or a receiver in carlos landry third one fill out the team early first round guy great value got to go with him 75 overall only normal development but number seven in the draft took him at 36 he's got 91 speed route running leaves a little bit to be desired it's interesting that he's a deep threat when his short route running is the best part of his game extremely well-rounded well-balanced looks like he's a really good player so not mad at that at all oh was just gonna take alani bernard went the pick before me qb is off the board but julian barkley's still here mid second round guy i might consider taking him no one's on our draft board hmm i mean he's not the worst he'd be a good pick for this spot if he's got star better development it's an automatic win i mean the way i see it we need a qb anyway julian barkley killed the combine he's got a pretty good arm welcome to the team 70 overall a little bit higher rated than marcus mariota who's no longer on the team ranked at number 48 took him at 68 only normal dev but he is a 70 88 throw power accuracy isn't the worst 85 speed 87 break sack hmm 93 change of direction hold on <laughs> that's really high fits the scheme as well for improviser i mean that could have gone a lot worse seventh round now the odds of getting anybody decent are super low we're just going to take the only one we have scouted shaq harden 65 overall ranked number 181 took him at 196 a lot of nice uh, stats in there just really not going to be my guy we're going to simulate to the end of the draft he might have to start right away we have john simpson we have the center we drafted we have colton miller it isn't the worst offensive line in the world but it also is pretty bad all right pretty big trade here nick kwiatkowski shedding some cap doing that number three overall from philadelphia but i don't think the eagles are going to be all that bad so that that projected pick is going to go probably down a lot we'll see where the chargers end up picking and then number 16 basically first round picks are expensive don't really want to pay that but we get derwin james an incredible player who more than makes up for the value of what we just lost really really good player and also we've talked about it before safeties not that expensive derwin james is a beast we had an actual free safety to play on the other side of jonathan abram really really good pickup to the team he's not super expensive we check out his contract he is in the final year of his deal so we will have to re-sign him but it really shouldn't be too bad it'd be super nice if we could develop some of these guys like i like amik robertson a lot was so good at louisiana tech it's just his size really made him drop in the draft and limits what he can do probably will never be a boundary guy at 5 8 i mean when i say probably almost certainly won't be a boundary guy at any point but in the nickel could be pretty productive isaiah johnson guy I like quite a lot of houston 6'2 208 and he's extremely fast 92 speed to go with that size really really good but at the same time don't know if he's ever going to develop at all damon arnett 
Not really the best athlete in the world, but technically pretty good. Older corner, rookie in real life. He's okay, but will he ever develop because of normal dev? I don't, I don't know. Not a ton. Trayvon Mullen I like. Super young. Talented for them. We'll have to see. But we do have the makings of a very good team. I'd love a better middle linebacker next to Isaiah Simmons. I think we'll be able to go out and trade for one. I need to go out and trade for some better offensive linemen. My voice is uh, about to go out on me. I'd almost rather that it cracked. Because it's like, oh man, I've been talking so much it cracked. But it, it just withered up and died. And I'm like, water. I'm like, okay. Easy trade for me. We're swapping Brandon Parker and Jesse Davis. Davis is more expensive because um, we needed to get him in order to make this trade work for salary for the Dolphins. But also, Jerome Baker, great player. We're essentially just getting him for a fourth round pick along with Brandon Parker. Jesse Davis is getting cut. I mean, I'm not going to pretend like, oh, he could make an impact for us. We all know the deal. Uh, there's no shot. Jesse Davis is done. 66 overall, 29 years old, 3.59 mil in cap room, not even close to worth it. But we did get a great middle linebacker next to Isaiah Simmons. We are in a tremendous spot. I need offensive linemen though, badly. It's funny that one of the only teams in the league that has interest in Jeff Heath is the Cowboys because they actually don't have interest in him, even though he started there forever for some reason. But Jeff Heath is gonna get me something on this Cowboys team. How about C.D. Lamb? And they're going to tell me no. Oh, they can't even afford it. Jeff Heath, a third next year and a fifth this year, gets me Zach Martin. I think the Cowboys probably don't make this trade in real life. <laughs> but in this move, in this fantasy land, this movie rebuild money ball, they do. Now, the thing about Zach Martin, he's pretty damn expensive. But he also, in the grand scheme of things, would not be very expensive for a tackle or at least one of his caliber. He would be uh, probably under what some of the top ones are getting paid. So he's going to be our highest paid player right now by a lot. That's also fine because he is 30 years old. Superstar development. As an offensive lineman, probably won't see him regress very much, if at all, this first year. He's still amazing. He's under contract. We can, we can get some more expensive players as long as we stay under that uh, salary line that I've set and as you can see we are under a hundred million the cap hit did rise by the way from 210 to 222 which means that our salaries just needed to be under 152 right plus 12 135 plus 12 that's not 152 that's 147 I got my numbers mixed up there. Regardless of that, we are way under. We are under 100 mil right now. We don't have a quarterback. The team is not anywhere close to as good as it could be. We're not really paying anyone a ton. We have one guy over 10 mil, and then we have some, some high draft picks, but they never get over 10 mil. So I'm comfortable with where we are at the moment. We got a rookie quarterback. It'd be interesting to see how he plays. But I think this is the team going forward. It kind of sucks, but it, it could be worse. Everyone on this team, though, is a scheme fit for the most part. So we really are playing heavy into that. The offensive scheme like, will probably change at some point. I think that's safe to say. Just because, I mean, the Raiders don't exactly have the best offense in Sim. And I get that. But I don't know. Like, we'll have to see how it goes this year. Rookie quarterback maybe turns it around. Better than Mariota. You got a decent receiving core. Hunter Renfro is getting traded next year probably, but not this year. He's going to stick around. Defense is looking really nice. Bunch of good players set up for the future. Gardner, I'm not exactly sure what to do with him yet. He's not going to be a rush end over Pearson. Just won't happen. To be fair, already up to an 82 overall. I think it is better than where we started before we gutted the Raiders. But also, we needed to gut them. Because we really, really needed to free up a ton of cap room to make this money ball thing work. And I think I'll stop the sim probably at like week seven. Just so we can potentially trade someone if we need. Because what if Derwin James is like, I want 150 mil. And I say, I can't go over that. No, he won't. But um, I mean, some pretty big free agents in here. Jalen Richard is not worth it. Arden Key's gone. Alec Ingold is worth paying a fullback. 
We do need everybody else, though. Baker's going to get a massive deal in terms of the years. Colton Miller's going to be expensive. Maurice Hurst is going to be expensive, but he fits, so I want him. And then Derwin James also probably won't be too bad for a 25-year-old superstar X-Factor, 92 overall safety. He will be over 10 mil, but we have the money right now. So we'll see if he offers or if he accepts this contract. He does. Derwin James is back. Maurice Hurst. This really isn't so bad. I think I'll probably give him five years. And I have to up this very slightly. And he's back as well. Colton Miller's another expensive one. But he's back. We're doing really well so far for re-signing these guys on unreasonable deals. And then Jerome Baker needs a big deal. And he should be back. And he is. Okay, so... Some big contracts going out there. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, like, it's not too bad. Our salaries jump up just under 100 mil. And it's going to jump up even more after this. Because James is going to get up to 15 and a half. So some of these will get more expensive. Like, by a lot. But we just need to stay under that threshold again. It went from 135 to 147. But I'll probably even try to stay under that. So, or like well under that. As I'll get D-line training boost, O-line will be coming up next. As we will simulate to the midseason or the playoffs. We are 3-3 three and three right now. Broncos 0-6, rough start for them. We're in a tough division as well. Did not make the playoffs. Wow, man, really, really bad second half of the season. <laughs> That is so terrible. We were pretty much alternating wins and losses. And then just almost lost out. Barely beat the Chargers. And lost a lot of games. <laughs> Not very good from the boys. Check out the stats there. 17th best offense. Rookie quarterback could have been worse, to be fair. We need someone better than that. And our defense really wasn't good. Which is kind of the biggest shock for me. Josh Jacobs was solid. We knew that was going to happen. Henry Ruggs was the best receiver on our team by a lot. Uh, I, I don't even know if I can say that. Like, yeah, for touchdowns, but I mean, Hunter Renfro and Carlos Landry, even Darren Waller, really not too far behind. And then defensively, look at Isaiah Simmons. 118 tackles, six for loss, two sacks, three picks going off. Max Crosby, 17 tackles for loss. Led our team in sacks of seven and a half. Six and a half for Hurst. Six and a half for Cleveland Furl. Three and a half for Jacques Pearson, not even close to good enough. Three for Joey Gardner. Simmons had two. Arden Key had two. Interceptions, three for Simmons and Trayvon Mullen led the way. And then yearly awards. Ryan Tannehill wins MVP. We're not going to see any Raiders in here for Offensive Player of the Year. Maybe for Defensive Player of the Year, though. Isaiah Simmons at seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year is our QB, Julian Barkley. So if he gets up to star dev, that would be okay. Carlos Landry at two. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jacques Pearson. All right, Joey Gardner at eight. I don't know how, by the way. I don't know how he won that. Best D-line. Max Crosby, best linebacker. Ooh, I thought we were going to see Isaiah Simmons closer to the top. Unfortunately, it was not the case. But we're going into offseason number two. We just had a really awful season, but I feel like we have a decent amount of a momentum. We got a decent bit of momentum. Because we do have a solid team. We're building on what we had. Alec Ingold's in here. I don't really need a fullback. Like, if I could get him for super cheap, sure. But I think I'd be able to get him for super cheap in free agency. So, I'm letting everybody in here walk. And uh, we'll try to get some really good contracts in free agency. Just for a refresher, our salaries jump up to 127 mil. We need to stay under 147. Salary cap did go up to 234, though. From... 210 so that's what plus 24 from 135 so 135 plus 24 159 I, i'm not a math guy i hope that's correct what is it? i don't even remember the numbers 135 plus 24 159 wow do you believe in miracles we need to stay under 159 now so what that means is we have 32 million to go out in free agency and potentially bring somebody in so maybe Jacques Pearson, what is your dev trait? Superstar, I'll take it. Unless he got it. In which case, like, I'm not even that hyped. Now he had it. Let's go. That's what I like to see. 88 finesse moves already for him. Should I give him... Let's get power moves into the 70s. I know it's going to be like, oh, it's not nice anymore. 
Yeah, I feel that. But also, he's got to become more dynamic if he's going to be a beast. Julian Barkley, tell me he got star. I mean, that's just so stupid. Whatever. 84 overall team at least. 85 offense, 84 defense. Don't see any upgrades on offense because we definitely didn't have any. And then defensively, Max Crosby up to superstar. Max Hurst. Or Max Hurst. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look like a max. Maurice Hurst up to Superstar X-Factor. Love to see that. Is Blitz good? I don't know. Aaron Donald had it in my Rams rebuild. He was pretty good. Max Crosby, though, up to Superstar. Love to see that. Now, he's going to be really expensive when his contract expires, which is after this year. So, I don't love to see that. I do like the dev, pre uh, dev trait increase, though. Uh, anyone else notable? Trayvon Mullen up to star. Okay, that was actually not too bad. We had some big boosts in there. No one's going after Jair. See, this is what I was talking about with getting guys for super cheap. No one is trying to get these great players. So we're going to try and steal some of them. So as you can see, my cap room has jumped down a lot. But we're not going to get everyone I went after. I have a lot of negotiations going on. Like Jair... Orlando Brown Jr., Harold Landry, Naheem Hines, Alex Kappa, Connor Williams, A.J. Cole. Not to be confused with A.J. Cole, the pitcher in baseball. But if we could get Jair, I think that's the biggest one because he'd be such an upgrade to our secondary. It's not really a bad contract. I mean, it's an amazing contract for me. So I would love to get somebody. It was way better than I thought. Okay, we got Orlando Brown Jr. for absolutely nothing. We got a punter. That's fine. We got Harold Landry. I didn't expect for that one to happen. Like, that's that's the biggest thing I'm super confused about. Zach Martin's going to move back to right guard. Cool. Orlando Brown Jr. at right tackle. And our offensive line improves a lot. And that was one of the, the uh, positions going in, like left tackle across through right tackle, where I'm like, we probably aren't going to spend a lot of money on the offensive line because it's not really a super impactful position in Sim for the most part. But here we are. We've gotten some really good deals, gotten some really good players, and I think we're doing really well so far. Now, in regards to Harold Landry, I'm as surprised about this one as anybody. I don't really know what's going on with this, but basically, he's playing for super, super cheap. I kind of had to. Like, I'm, if he's going to accept that, good on him. You need a new agent. But does this mean we can't afford Jair anymore? Let me take a quick gander at the salaries again. We have to remain under 159. Currently, we're at one, uh, 139. So there is a little bit of wiggle room. I need to uh, retract some of these contracts, and they're mostly going to be on the O-line because if John Simpson's my worst O-lineman, we're doing something right. No one wants Jair still. Please sign. Please sign Jair. No. Fifth-year options. Is that Cleveland Furl? Can't pick it up. Absolutely not. No way. Damon Arnett. Another situation. Oh, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, yes. Damon Arnett's the next year. I don't know why I was being stupid. Um, Josh Jacobs for sure. And then I hope there's not a big market for Alexander. Nope, still just us. And Nahi Mines, I'm like, I'll take a backup running back. It's pretty much the thought process there. But if no one wants Rojo, I'd rather have him as a backup running back. And, well, not that much money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, we got Rojo and Jair Alexander. They need to fix free agency. It's super bad. But that is incredible for our team. Decent backup running back. And then stud. Stud corner. And look at his contract. Like, yeah, it is expensive based on our money ball thing going on. But also, it just gets over 10 mil at its highest point. That is a super, super good contract for a 26-year-old, 99 overall cornerback. We go to 150. Again, we have to stay under 159 as the cap rises to two, uh, 234 million. But our team's amazing. NFL Draft Time 2022. Pick at number three overall. Chargers are at number four. Is that number four from their actual pick? I think it is from going five and 11. Which makes me go, how well did the Eagles do? Did I do a really good move with uh, trading that pick for Derwin James? Tell me I did. 
Oh, no, the Chargers have it. I'm like, I'm, I was so confused. Um, yeah, number 12. So that was definitely worth it. It dropped from 3 to 12. Good value. I can't move up for a quarterback, but there are some great QBs here. Jeremiah Duggan. Michael Clemens. Chris Patchett. I'm fine with either of these top two guys. Daryl Moorhead is built like an absolute tank. 5'9", 224. It's a running back. The Rams at number one. Go quarterback. The Broncos at number two could go QB here. Hold on. I have to trade up. Absolutely have to. Jonathan Abram has one year remaining on his salary, or on his contract. It's got to happen. Jonathan Abram's headed to uh, Denver. Jonathan Abram at number three to move up one spot to number two. It is worth it to me because we need our QB of the future. Michael Clemens out of Texas Tech cannot risk the Broncos taking him. And the last QB out of Texas Tech, I don't know if you guys remember, decent player. I feel like they actually have fairly similar measurables as well. Patrick Mahomes is listed at 6'3", 230. Michael Clemens is 6'2", 227. I feel like Mahomes probably ran about 4.62 as well. Maybe even a bit slower in terms of 40 time. Uh, he's got A-plus throw power. Mahomes ran 4.8 flat unofficial. So Michael Clemens is better than Patrick Mahomes. I think that checks out. 75 overall. Unfortunately, only normal development. Number six in the class took with number two, but we had to. And I really do think we have a great player here. 90 throw power, 85 throw accuracy deep. Decent, medium, and short. Nothing crazy. High break sack, high speed, amazing change of direction as well. I think we had to do that. Now picking at number nine, is Daryl Moorhead the guy? Is that my Jonathan Abram replacement? He almost seems more like a LaMarcus Joyner replacement at five foot nine. What else is down the board? I mean, if I'm taking a safety, I'm taking one now. Safety inside the top 10. We could go corner, but... Daryl Moorhead it is. 75 overall, ranked number 7. Star better development. I think that was a good pick for us. 91 speed, 70 zone, 73 man, 77 hit power. Block shed it, and then rush moves are terrible. But that's not what he needs to do. He needs to make plays at safety. Derwin James moves back over to strong safety. Pretty good pickup for us. This seems to be a pretty good draft overall. I definitely would have considered taking outside linebacker. If one of those guys lasted, but I definitely can't. Uh, Brandon Hargrove, is, is Bre or Brendan Hargrove, is he going to last? Is he going to be available? Yeah, I'm going to trade out of this pick. Trading number 29 and number 67 for a first rounder next year from Denver. Made a lot of sense for us to do that. We're going to take a linebacker here at the top of the second round. Like, yeah, we do have Jerome Baker. And he's locked up for a while. Could take a backup running back behind Rojo. Don't think that's worth it, but he is an early first-round guy. So that's tempting, but I think he'd be pretty much the same price that we're paying Ronald Jones, so I'm not sure it's worth it, even though he is a better player in terms of overall. I think I would rather have Brendan Hargrove. He's a late first-round guy, a middle linebacker. Maybe not. I don't know. Like, Rojo's just way too cheap for what he brings to the table. I don't think I can take a running back here. And I'm going to keep Josh Jacobs. Isaiah Simmons will be on the team. Jerome Baker's almost getting too expensive. I am going to take this back up middle linebacker. He's only going to be like a 70 overall. But I'm super fine with that. We're not drafting for overall, as I talked about. We're drafting for the player. 73 overall, to be honest, is pretty good for number 21 in the draft. Number 35 is where we took him. 88 speed. 69 zone coverage. Nice. Block shed's low, but he actually looks like a really, really good player, and he fits the scheme. I'm in. Let's go receiver here. Last pick of the draft for me. Peter Allen, 73 overall with star, better development. Slot type, and that's all he is. I mean, doesn't offer anything as a deep throw. It's 66 deep route running, but he's actually a really, really solid looking slot receiver. That's Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro is gone. I, I wanted to make a pun for it, like Hunter Renfro, Hunter Ren thrown away, I don't know, in the trash. I, there's not really anything there. 
unless I'm missing something. I want to do like gone, but whatever. Uh, ignore me, please. So some of the players I did want were flying off the edge, as they usually are. Andrew Flores is someone I very much considered, but I went with a safety instead. He's the number one player in the draft. Only normal dev. I'd rather actually have my guy. Joey Gardner is going to move down to right end for me. He will be my Cleveland Furl replacement. He won't actually be a ton cheaper because we took him at number four in the draft. But for right now, he'll be a backup. Furl is gone after this year. We have Harold Landry. Moorhead starting a free safety. I mean, our cornerback group is pretty damn good. Jair Alexander, Trayvon Mullen, Damon Arnett. If you look at specialists here, Furl... Mm, no, 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 no. Max Crosby's going to have to be a rush T tackle. And at 6'5", 270, I am super cool doing that. Furl's cool. I loved him at Clemson. Just, I think for the sake of development, the sake of his development trait only being normal, and getting Max Crosby more reps, getting Pearson in there, Harold Henry both off the edge, I think it makes more sense to to play Crosby as a rush D tackle. I want to say I'm not crazy for thinking of doing that. Hunter Renfro is probably going to get traded. But what is he going to get traded for? What do I need? Maybe a left guard instead of John Simpson? Yeah. And I'm sure what will be an unpopular trade. I'm trading Hunter Renfro and a fourth for Natani Moody. Guy was super high on in the draft who only fell because of injuries. I think that is represented in the game. Is he a star dev? He sure does. He also is a scheme fit and is an upgrade over John Simpson. They're playing on pretty much the same contract. But Moody, on the other hand, is a uh, five overall higher, a development trade above, and a definite upgrade to our O-line. I mean, it's so funny that we have so many scheme fits all over the place, and I feel like I should definitely change it because this offense is just, like, so bad. But I want to keep West Coast Power Run because of all the scheme fits for upgrading. I mean, I'll try out... Uh, I'll try out Tennessee alongside this. But I think... I, at first, I was told from guys at EA that the scheme is only for XP. And then, like, the more and more I experiment with it, it seems like scheme almost matters more than playbook does at times. But I am going to change the playbook. I want Allen to get some more playing time. He is my Hunter Renfro of the future. Like, there's no reason to have Hunter Renfro. who We will have to pay more. Isaiah Simmons with an upgrade here. I don't want pass coverage on him. I just don't. I want run stopper. Plus two tackle. I mean, I kind of wanted block shed, but I'll take that. This is the team. You've seen the offense. It's quite good. Like, it really is. We just need a quarterback that's going to get developed. And then defensively, I mean, I think it's quite good as well. Hargrove is a great, great third middle linebacker option. Jerome Baker will end up getting traded. At specialist, I have Hargrove playing um, over him, or at least I thought I did before I did, uh, like, generate best lineup. Sometimes I do that, I don't even realize it, and I forget, and it changes my entire stuff up. We're going to do DB training boost. Got some young cornerbacks I want to develop, and of course, it's starting safety, who is a rookie. We will simulate to the midseason mark. Season 3 in 2022. This is going super well, I would say, so far. Even though we haven't seen the simulation success, we've clearly built a very good team. 88 overall. Got a lot of guys on really good deals. We are playing under the threshold I've set. And at week 9, we are 4-3. and three. We have a positive record. And just double-checking on salaries here. We're actually over. We just jumped over. So that's no good. It needs to be at 159. We jumped up to 162. Because the CPU signed players is what happened. Um, I mean, guys are getting cut. That's just what's going to happen. Robert Foster. Gone. Go off to a Foster home. So I got rid of some of the players that the CPU just randomly signed that killed my, uh, my entire Moneyball idea. We are under the $159 million threshold I've set for salaries. Again, that jumped up because of the salary cap jumping up. We've uh, had it go up accordingly, so it matches as the contracts scale up. 89 overall, though. So I think we've done a really, really good job with, you know, having everything where it needs to be. But the big thing is, 
we have some big free agents and we're not going to be able to pay them all we're not going to be able to afford it foster moreau probably going to foster go so i'm so i gotta stop trying to do that it's just leave it max crosby i'd love to bring back trayvon mullen i'd like to bring back cleveland furrow we talked about it he unfortunately has to go but after i give out these contracts i it's not going to change um where it is for this season but for next season it's going to take effect crosby wants uh more money and then i think the trayvon mullen contract is actually pretty reasonable so he's back but again we're gonna have to navigate change our salary situation up after this year i do want max crosby back 100 percent gonna need to make some moves to make that happen we did make the playoffs in 2022 10 and 6 and of course the oakland athletics did not exactly win the world series um that big year where they had like a 20 something game winning streak uh they got eliminated 2002 i think it was yeah they went 103 and 59 so great season finished first in the division but they also were eliminated when when were they eliminated in the why is it not clearly shown oh there we go they lost in the division series which is the equivalent of the division series <laughs> in football the divisional so um we didn't win the division unfortunately but did finish second in a really really competitive division 24th best offense in terms of yards but the defense was top five in the nfl really really good points scored 18 so it's just really the offense was not amazing as a rookie though michael clemens was fantastic 4,000 plus yards 31 touchdowns to only 11 interceptions rushing josh jacobs was awesome in limited attempts he's got to get the football more i think that's pretty obvious had eight touchdowns though as did rojo peter allen the rookie out of tennessee over 1100 yards and 14 touchdowns only star development for him he's wearing number nine that's not allowed I guess all of her teens and 80s numbers were taken. So I'm going to leave it. Uh, he can just have nine. Kind of sick. Darren Waller, 80 catches for over 900 yards, six TDs. Henry Ruggs wasn't in the slot, so his numbers weren't crazy. Carlos Landry was all right. Defensively, Isaiah Simmons had 130 tackles. With those 113 tackles, three were for loss, half a sack, two picks. Nothing crazy. Harold Landry, 13 tackles for loss, led the team. Had nine and a half sacks, which also led the team. Hurst, five and a half, five for Crosby, three for Gardner, two and a half for Billingsley, two for Baker. I don't think I set up Rush D lineman the way I was supposed to. Completely forgot. Jair, three picks led the way. Simmons, Arnett, Mullen, all with two. And then for yearly awards, we have Cam Newton winning MVP. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Cam Newton. Hey, Michael Clemens, our quarterback at number 10. Defense Player of the Year is TJ Watt. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Michael Clemens. Peter Allen at three with 14 touchdowns. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is DeLaren Whitworth. Daryl Moorhead, our free safety at number two. Brandon Hargrove, our middle linebacker at number five. We are a 91 overall team. I would say doing pretty well by quarterback training boost. And we'll see if we can beat the Jaguars. Just lost to them in week 17. Let's hope this game goes a little bit differently. And it does. 31-14 as we advance to the divisional. Facing the LA Chargers, division winner Chargers as well. I want to see that safety's development trait though. Only star, as I guess is to be expected. But for Rush D lineman, I meant to move this all around. I completely forgot. I feel terrible. Furl really shouldn't have been playing very much at all. But uh, I left him there, unfortunately. So I did change up specialist. I took Maurice Hurst out of there just because like, he's not the best pass rusher. Max Crosby's going to be fine there. Furl was already there. And then I had Pearson coming in. Harold Landry staying at rush right end. See if we can beat the Chargers in the divisional. It's going to be a tough matchup. Chargers are always strong in simulation. And they proved that this time around. Winning 34-28 as we advance to the offseason. Salary cap for the league is going to jump up. So, of course, our salary cap will jump up as well. It seems like the Chargers crushed the Giants in the Super Bowl. But we need to check out salaries. So... It is up to 242. Our salaries jumped up to 167. Is that fine? I don't think so. It's actually on the exact number. It's 75 below exact. 
I'm just not a math guy. I don't even I don't even bother looking at the numbers really. Put them into the calculator and it tells me. Furl's gotta go. I'd love to bring Max Crosby back. I don't think I'm really able to. And I can't have that happen. So what's gonna happen is I think Gardner's gonna go. How does Clemens not get upgraded, man? Ooh, Allen. Up to superstar. There we go, Peter. That's what I like to see. Harold Landry up to superstar. That's awesome. Here's the thing. If we lose Max Crosby, what do we look like? I think we look a lot worse. Furrow's leaving as well. I mean, we just wouldn't we wouldn't have any setup. We have to keep Max Crosby and then get rid of other guys. So that's going to suck, but also it has to happen. Need Max Crosby back. Absolutely has to happen. So there's my offer. Max Crosby returns. Have to let everybody else walk. And then as we go to free agency here, we really can't afford anybody. We have 54.9 million and can't afford anyone because salaries is now at 177. That's a problem. And again, it's not really about cap space right now. We need to clean 10 million. And now you see the rookie reserve. If we got rid of our draft picks, if we got rid of them, we'd be able to afford it. But I need to get wi uh, rid. I need to get rid of 10 mil. It's not like Elmer Fudd. It's Wabbit season. I need to get rid of 10 mil in salaries, though. We need to get to 167. I'm looking at this QB. It's just all about the salary hit. I'll take the penalty. You know what it has to be? It has to be Zach Martin. I think it almost certainly has to be Zach Martin, which is brutal. The fact that Michael Clemens didn't go up to star dev is like so bothersome to me, but also does it open the door for him to be the one to go? Barkley's way cheaper, is under contract for the next two seasons, and is significantly cheaper, as I, as I mentioned before. Like, significantly. It's a small difference in overall. Nah, I think we'll just hold on to him. I mean, this wouldn't be the whole money ball concept if I didn't have to make tough moves that I don't really want to make. But Zach Martin has to go. Zach Martin and a future third gets me a current two. Breaks my heart, but also it puts us under the salaries threshold. So it had to happen. We needed to get under 167 or at 167, and we did that. We lose a really, really good player, but we honestly didn't have much of a choice. It had to happen. So John Simpson going to right guard. Kind of a downgrade from Zach Barton, I think it's safe to say. NFL draft time. What am I even looking for here? I mean, I'm not going to trade up. There's almost no way that happens. But if we look at this team, I mean, it's just pretty good. I mean, I don't really think there's any position I actually need. I know that seems crazy, but our defense is excellent. And our offense, I mean, we could use a better QB, but... Am I really going to find that in this draft? Am I going to keep, keep drafting QBs until I get one without normal dev? We'd be here forever. Here we are at number 12. Well, good thing I don't need a quarterback because they're all terrible. I mean, I do kind of need a QB, but like not, like not that badly. It makes no sense to take this pick at number 12. So I will just use it to trade down for a first rounder next year. And the cycle continues. A one this year and a two next year gets me a one next year. We save money by doing that, but more importantly, we don't waste money, which, and there is a difference, there is. And then I'm trading a first round pick number 27 overall for a right guard in bonds. Doesn't fit our scheme, but our scheme can change and it probably will if I want us to be our most successful. He's a 77 overall, he's only 24 years old. He's an upgrade over John Simpson, if only slightly. Probably could have looked around, but I wanted someone that was not expensive and was still going to help us out as we simulate to number eight in the second round. Have a player I want. Hopefully he is still available, and he is. Sidney Thomas had LSU. Looks amazing. 
linebacker type safety and he is a 76 overall normal dev number seven in the class took him at 40 91 speed high tackling high hit power block sheds low but i mean he's a linebacker playing safety second round here nelson bomber lasted colorado state edge rusher 72 overall star better development number 19 in the class took him at 59 He's got 82 speed, 80 finesse moves. He looks like some of the uh, like 77 overall players you might draft. His play rec and awareness are just low, but his actual ability is fantastic. And that will do it for the draft. 89 overall team, 89 offense, 91 defense. Offense is still very, very good. Again, like we've slightly upgraded at right guard over John Simpson. It's plus six and he's under contract for longer, so I'm cool to do it. And then defensively, we have some very interesting decisions to make. I almost want to say that the big brain play is move Pearson down to right end and have just Bomber start at left outside linebacker. I think that could really be the move. But I don't want to get crazy. Jerome Baker is also someone that probably needs to get traded just because with his contract situation, it's not worth paying him when we have a middle linebacker behind him that's almost as good. And after the draft, our salaries jumped up to 170. And of course, for those mathematicians out there, that is not under the limit. I need to remove a few million, and of course, it is going to be Jerome Baker. He's just got to go. It's his time. Okay, I'm trading Bonds, the guard we just traded for, and Jerome Baker for Elton Jenkins. It isn't a major salary cap reduction, but it, it is. So we jumped down to 168. Which means we are what one mil away from the 75 million dollar threshold and we upgraded huge at guard elton jenkins is under contract for the next few years this might be the final season here so i would love to be super successful moody's gonna move back over to right guard and i need to get rid of just a few contracts of players who don't even play i mean tanner muse could go right now but i mean he's an okay backup so it's just gonna end up being one of the 40 receivers the CPU signed for no reason. Zach Terry, star dev. All right, well, you can stay. Unfortunately, I got to get rid of my guy, little Jordan Humphrey then, and pretty much every receiver underneath him. Okay, so now we are exactly at my threshold. 167 million in salaries, which is 75 mil under the cap. Of course, because of cap penalties, the cap space only says 72.8 million. But again, that wasn't really the goal of the video is dealing with cap penalties because... I mean, we would have failed right away. I do think the team's quite good, though. Unfortunately, for the squad, as, yeah, Natani Muti is going to move back over. I think I'm going to change the offensive scheme because I want to dominate. And I don't think this is a dominating type scheme. As, as though, uh, I mean, we won 10 games last year, but I want to win more. And I think we have a better shot to do that in a different scheme. Going West Coast spread and Chicago, which does fit for some of our players. Tackles are fine. QB is fine in there. Uh, Allen works. He will be our second receiver. Carlos Landry in behind him. And then defensively, of course, you've seen it. It's a really, really good defense. Scheme fits all over the place. We've built this exactly to my specifications, except for Pearson is going to move up to rush left end. Max Crosby to rush the tackle. Harold Landry off the other edge. And we should be in a great spot. Why would Pearson be a sub linebacker? Is he that good off the ball? He had 94 finesse moves. Good lord. Good lord. 91 offense, 89 defense, 90 overall. We'll simulate to the midseason mark. Midseason mark. We are four and three. And it's a super competitive AFC West. Really, really good teams in there. And we knew that going in. Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs really really good i mean you look at the Chargers with justin herbert really really good if the broncos could find a quarterback well they're going to be a pretty good team as well and their new qb is connor richards random superstar dev quarterback not even that good all right not going to worry about contracts right now because i think this is going to be the final season but josh jacobs is there he'd be super cheap just because he is a running back and running backs are not really expensive at all in a in franchise mode so he would probably be maybe four or five mil a year up to eight 
so nothing crazy playoff time we are in the playoffs finished at 10 and 6 won the division no less three teams went nine and seven broncos chargers chiefs oh my goodness the chiefs actually didn't make the playoffs because they went nine and seven that is wild i mean there's no way they made the playoffs right with the amount of wild card spots no they mathematically could not have but the chargers also didn't make it so sucks to be them ninth best offense and michael clemens actually was quite good did throw 14 interceptions 4200 yards 37 tds though rushing josh jacobs 1100 yards 5.2 per carry 5 tds rojo 10 average four per carry receiving peter allen 1200 yards 12 touchdowns he is amazing just not much of a deep route runner rugs over 900 780 for darren waller 600 for carlos landry eight tds for waller and rugs and then defensively isaiah simmons 110 tackles 11 for loss two and a half sacks two picks my goodness 23 tackles for loss for harold landry what a pickup he had 12 and a half sacks led the team eight and a half for Jacques pearson six for max crosby five and a half for joey gardner four and a half mo hurst hargrove had three isaiah simmons two and a half where is nelson bomber had one didn't really play a whole lot so i mean that's that's okay and then uh interceptions we have two from simmons led the way no one really had a ton where were we in terms of team defense our offense was top 10 in terms of yards defense was not top 10 did have 49 sacks though allowed 427 points a little bit too much for my liking as the ravens allowed under 300 are you kidding me oh man Steelers defense was pretty good as well i mean look at the chargers look at the vikings patriots went off i mean i almost want to go to the patriots three four under type setup after they were so good like is that worth doing is three four under low key the glitch <laughs> oh man i feel stupid talking like that but like it might be bomber only has star i mean it's not terrible right but like it's not amazing team is looking pretty good though no 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 all right we're gonna upgrade the team here didn't want to actually uh, actually upgrade only one guy who doesn't even play we have home field advantage against the nine and seven broncos and we win but unfortunately we're matched up against the patriots in the divisional oh no and do wide receiver training boost and what overall are patriots 84 i mean this should be a murder right and we win again 31 14 i'm jumping in for the uh, conference championship without question here i don't want to risk a loss at this point not even playing at home the team's awesome by the way 92 overall 93 offense 92 defense playing under our salary goal we had money ball and the best team in the league but the ravens brought in harrison smith mark cheeks brown out there at wide receiver an entertaining game so far six nothing through almost an entire half wow six to six i i'm on the edge of my seat for this one. Oh my goodness end of the third quarter it's 12 to 6 do we have an offense oh my goodness can we get a stop at least please i'm jumping in i've seen enough derwin james and isaiah simmons up the middle might be very tough to defend the run here and that's exactly what it is it's a run thank god i helped out that was gonna be a td third and six huge play here huge play and it's a throwaway i don't know if that's the call lamar they're gonna punt the football back to us we got Allen returning. Touchdown puts us in the lead if, as long as we get the extra point. And we're going to start from the 20. It's so weird not playing NCAA 14 and seeing a receiver wear number 9. I don't even know where I want to go with the football here, though. She's going to check down. We have time. Let's just not get crazy. Let's just not get crazy. 14 for 28. Not good. And end an interception. That's that Lamar Jackson stat line. And that's not me making fun of Lamar Jackson in real life. He actually had an almost identical stat line when I saw it when we played uh, defense. As Josh Jacobs is just kind of too good. I was really comfortable giving him the football, approaching the two-minute warning. And he's just amazing. And I, I almost just made a huge mistake. But Darren Waller breaks a tackle. We're going to get out of bounds. 
He's so good. Probably should have gone to Josh Jacobs, though. Didn't really even see him on the other side of the field. And Henry Ruggs is super fast. If Darren Waller can take Harrison Smith, we're going to have so much space up the field. But I'm going to check down. Give it to Josh Jacobs, who's just way too good. Approaching midfield. We want to control the clock. Do not want to give too much time to the Raiders and Lamar Jackson, or the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. That'd be a huge mistake. That's open over the middle. There we go, Landry. Carlos Landry, I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Shout out Tim McGraw. We got a minute and 14 to play. Down to a minute. Is that safety coming up to blitz? He sure is. Give me time. We had square. Run out, Josh Jacobs. I'm going to give it to him. Hey, there we go. I don't know why you're diving down like that. We're going to call a timeout. The last thing I want is to get intercepted throwing the slant here to Waller. I think it might have been. Oh, my goodness. It's open. On the run. We hit Henry Ruggs. He's down at the six. Do I call a timeout? Mm, I think no. I think no. I think we let it tick down a little bit. Hand the ball off to Josh Jacobs here. And have him do magic. Up the middle. Jacobs. Touchdown. We're going to tie the game at 12. Very, very good drive. Slow and steady won the race. Extra point puts us on top. And that's exactly what happens. 13-12 Raiders. The Ravens have 19 seconds to come back. All right, 15 seconds and an unbelievable defense. Do not get burnt. Please. Oh, checkdowns? Checkdowns won't win you the game. They do have the best kicker in NFL history, though. Oh, where's Adam Vinatieri? Uh, yeah, dude, he had some clutch click kicks. Maybe the best clutch kicker of all time. Guess what? I'm going to take the guy who's got a way higher all-time field goal percentage. I, how did I run past that? There's two seconds, though. They have to take a shot at the end zone. I'm going to blitz Damon Arnett. I'm going to blitz Isaiah Simmons. And we're going to force the ball out early. Get to him. What is the logic of the Madden CPU at sometimes? There isn't any. That's the answer. Down by one. Does Lamar Jackson know that there's two seconds left in the game and that a quick out is not helpful? Man, these QBs were terrible today. Like, almost identically bad. Really, really awful. The run game was pretty good. Maybe when Josh Jacobs is averaging almost six yards per carry, maybe you give him more than 12 attempts. I'm firing the offensive coordinator. Super Bowl time, we have my favorite team, the New York Giants. Seems like it's always the Giants in the Super Bowl. Giants playbooks are OP. That's all I found out. They went 13 and three. I gotta run only Giants playbooks for an entire rebuild. Maybe for my Giants 20 year rebuild coming up. Oh, dude, I just spoil that? Peter Allen, superstar X Factor. He's wearing number nine overall, or nine, uh, number nine as a receiver. He's an 89 overall. Clemens goes up to star. Love to see it. He's playing up to an 85. And then defensively, we got Harold Landry going up to superstar X Factor. You love to see it. And look at Jacques Pearson. 92 overall. He's only 23. Shout out Glaber Torres. 96 finesse moves. 96. He's like, oh, I'm going to get five sacks a season. Three, four. Or he had eight and a half in 2023. Did I not check out the stats? I may have just completely forgot to do that. Mm, these look familiar. I just, How did I miss eight and a half sacks from Pearson? I mean, that's a pretty good number. I mean, I ain't mad about that. We got the Giants in the Super Bowl. We've made it all the way. We've got a 92 overall team. 93 offense, 92 defense. Salaries, of course, under the threshold. We're at exactly 75 mil, as I stayed under the entire rebuild, except for the CPU. Is like, I'm going to bring in some random guys. No. Baker Mayfield, QB of the Giants now. We have a massive overall advantage. 92 to 86. For those who are not quite math savvy out there, believe that is... 
six overall points. Could be mistaken. I sure as hell hope not. <laughs> uh, but we got Raiders, Giants, Super Bowl. There's Saquon. Would love for them to win in real life. This is a video game, though. So, screw them. We need the Super Bowl win. Big start, 7-0. Giants answer with a field goal. And we get a field goal of our own, make it 10-3. 10-10, though. This is a very close game. Come on, keep the Giants out of the end zone. We can't. 17-17. 24-17, the Giants take the lead, but we answer right back. The Giants score nearly instantly. Darius Slayton, 48-yard touchdown. And we're taking over on offense. I can't risk it. Actually, you know what? We're going to watch. We're going to watch this drive. Third and one. You got to figure this goes to Josh Jacobs. It's not going to. But it's open over the middle. That's a big catch. That's Carlos Landry moving the chains. Going back over the middle. This time, Henry Ruggs, and he takes a monster shot from Jabril Peppers. But holds on to the football. Three interceptions for our quarterback in this game. But he is driving this Raiders team down the field when it matters most. Josh Jacobs has 15 carries for 117 and a touchdown. Why is he not getting the ball more? Oh, it's because of the playbook. I know, but I gotta, I gotta complain about something clearly. It's a screen. Jacobs only gets about four. Chabril Pepper's coming up. It's a safety blitz. Recognize it, please. Get rid of the ball over the middle. That's a touchdown, Henry Ruggs. Ties up the game here in Super Bowl 50-something. Is it even? I don't even know the year, so it might be like 60. There's a good chance it could be. But it's going to be 31-31, second and 10. Pretty dynamic offense here for the Giants. Saquon Barkley, Baker Mayfield, Darius Slayton. It's a screen. Isaiah Simmons read it pretty well, but Saquon Barkley is just a little bit too fast. I mean, this is a game-winning drive here for the Giants. I might have to jump in at some point. Baker at a shotgun. He's going to throw over the middle. That's Saquon Barkley and a first down for the Giants as they are past the 40, approaching midfield very quickly. Baker again. All day to throw. Goes left sideline and throws it away. Maybe looking for Evan Ingram there. After another throwaway, this is third and 10. We are sending a safety blitz. Okay, that's interesting. Mayfield out of the shotgun. Has time. Throws down the field. And that is incomplete. Sterling Shepard can't stay in bounds, And the Giants are going to punt the football back. It was a beauty, though. This Raiders team is pinned at the six-yard line. 42 seconds to play. It's going to be a handoff to Josh Jacobs. I need to jump in. Okay, we're not getting safety here to end the game. We are not getting safety. That is not how this Super Bowl ends. Oh, we got decent blocks. Josh Jacobs is up the middle and gone. Pepper's trying to chase him down. We made a juke move. Josh Jacobs to the 49. I thought for a minute we could add a touchdown, but Jabril Peppers was just a little bit too fast. And we're in a position as our interior offensive line dominates there. We're in a position to win this football game. Step up. Throw on the run. And on the money for Henry Ruggs. Get out of bounds. We're in field goal range. Just want to get a little bit closer here. No interceptions, but Ruggs is open, and he is going to take it to the 10-yard line. Two seconds remain. We're probably going to get iced here, but it's a 27-yard manageable field goal, and there's the ice. Now, we've seen Daniel Carlson miss some massive field goals before, I believe with the Vikings. This time, he's on a different team. Do we get a different result? Kick is up, and kick is Good. The Raiders have won the Super Bowl. A Lombardi trophy is headed back to Las Vegas. The Moneyball rebuild, I think we can consider a success. We've won the Super Bowl here. We've managed to have a ton of cap room. And we've reached the ultimate goal of winning it all. The Raiders, the Moneyball Raiders, our Super Bowl champions couldn't do it in Oakland but managed to do it in Las Vegas. Josh Jacobs is your Super Bowl MVP. And we were, you know, ready to play for overtime. He broke one up the middle on an inside zone play, went for about 50 yards, 
and put us in a position to win the Super Bowl. Well-deserved Super Bowl MVP as Henry Ruggs, Clemens, Josh Jacobs, and of course, Isaiah Simmons. Well, hoist the Lombardi as we call this one a success. Hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. Helps me out a ton. It's completely free. If you have a YouTube account, which you probably do. Google account, you certainly do. But that's going to do it for the video. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.